see there we got the frame put together it's uh, fairly square it really doesn't matter it's just a catfish trap just as square as that one all we did was just used his pattern uh, really doesn't matter where you put these you're gonna have one on the end you're gonna have your front flue all the way on this end 22 from the back side of this one to this one 22 from this one 22 22 and a quarter to the throat, the edge of it here, and then I think he just put this in here. Probably didn't even measure, to be honest about it. So if I had to build some more of these, and I'm going to, I'd pre-cut everything out, build these flues ahead of time, have three or four sets of these built, and then it'd be real easy to put these boxes together. All we got to come in here and do, this is going to be the sides. Um, this one right here is going to be the top. I wanted this on the top. I just like the way the flue is sitting in there right now. So we'll build our door in here, right here, and the rest of it will be boarded up. We got laid on us last night, and uh, we got this far. We got the frame put together. Decided to do wait and finish it this evening. So uh, I think I'm going to put the bottom on first because the bottom's going to be solid. Um, three sides have to have a one inch gap, I believe. So we'll do that in a second. But I think I'll go ahead and put slats on the bottom. All right, Dad on his, and I've seen other people do this, they just come across here and just leave this gap in here. I decided to cut me some pieces to go in here just to make all this flush up. It's not really that big of a deal, but um, I just think it'll look a little bit better we stick a piece right in there, like so. Like I said, that's really not doing anything. That's just cosmetic in there. That's pretty much it. That way when we staple this, on top of there it just looks like this is all flush and we can trim these uh, throat pieces off right here. Looking good. Looking good so far. We want a one inch gap 
on three sides at least. So the door is going to have a one-inch gap. And we're going to put a one-inch gap right here. Now what I'm doing, I just got this as a gauge. This is a little over an inch. It's uh, about an inch and an eighth. That's going to make our gap just over um, one inch. So it'll for sure be legal. And we'll let a few of those smaller fish get out. But uh, just to me, I'd rather have a little bit bigger gap and be for sure good than I had cut it close. I want to fill this front up. I double check, in the state of Louisiana, we can actually go 24 inches um, diameter or square on the trap or rectangle. So we're well within our legal. We already got one inch gap here. We're required to have a one inch gap all the way down this on three sides in the state of Louisiana. So what I'm gonna do, I actually want some gaps back here so the little fish should get out because I don't want to fool with those. I'm going to fill all this up up here. So anything like that, it doesn't matter how you do your slats, anything like that is going to be about right on the side. You check your state regulations, state of Louisiana, we got to have a one inch gap. I got a little over one inch thick on this, so we ended up with nearly an inch and a quarter gap right there. Um, you got to have a one inch gap all the way down one side, or three sides of the trap. And we've got that, you can see there, we got a of gap in there. All right, so I got my spacer board right there, so I'll make sure I got these um, a little over an inch. Come back here. One thing I wanted to add to it was a handle. So I think I'm going to put a handle right here. I want to also add a screw in each side of this. And that wood's so hard, that white oak is, you got to pre drill a hole to, just about to get a screw to go in.
that's going to do is give us something to grab a hole to to help get it in the boat if it's loaded down with fish. So. All right, what I got on the door, I just stuck me a couple of uh, strips in there, like so, held my uh, board, my one bias up under here, just like that, come right to the edge of this, and, and the way I want this is so when this goes in here, and I shove it over, I've got these lips here, go up under this slat, like that, right there, and then when it lays down, I'm clear of this slat. And then we'll have some latches over here that slide over like this. So, um, to keep it from going, like right now, it would go this way, and that wouldn't be good, and all our fish would get out. So to keep it from going back and forth, this last one, it's going to go up here, and I had to cut it a little bit shorter because it's going against this post right here when it slides up under there. And I'm going to pull that right there to that edge like that and staple it in. Alright, our doors intact. Nothing wrong with that, right there. It'll go right in there. And it'll slide a little bit. We want a little bit of slack like that, but it won't go off either end and open up. All right, I got my spacer. I'm gonna put these last two slats on the door part. That's going to help hold all of our cheese in here around the flute. Nothing to that one. It ain't much, it's just a little board to help hold the bait in here around the flute. Um, especially when you're laying it down flat in the lake. You don't want to the cheese drifting back up in here where a catfish can get to it. We want them to have to come through here to get it. I just took and pre-drilled some holes in all of these. And then I'm just setting it right over here, center of our cross brace here. Pre-drilling me a little hole right there. Let's get these screws started. don't want these too tight, you may have to loosen them up, but you want them tight enough that if they hold and all this wood's going to swell, so that's probably going to be fine. Like I said, we're going to put these out in the pond and they'll, loose, they'll tighten up a little bit, so I don't want them too tight, but that right there is not going anywhere. There it is. Alright, I'm going to take the door off, show you what we're fixing to do. We got some window weights. I just got two window weights in this end and two up under the flue. We're going to sink this in a pond, let it soak up for a few days so we don't have to take the weights when we take it to the lake and start fishing it. And uh, the next video is going to be pretty exciting because the next one is going in the water. But 
That's the complete build on the first slat trap that I've ever built. The next time you see this trap, we're going to be hopefully going to catch some fish in it. Y'all be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Click the bell so you'll get the notifications on all the new videos coming out. We'll have a lot more content like this coming out. The likes, shares, and comments. Um, the comments give us ideas. The likes and shares, that helps uh, the algorithms on YouTube put us out there so more people see our videos. All that helps our channel. That's going to be it for this one. God's Country Hunting and Fishing. Keeping it real. There she goes.